Hello everybody, Gator with ESLZ Bikes, and today we are going to go over brake systems. The brake system on a bike is probably one of the most, if not the most important safety thing you have on your bike. Let's face it, doesn't matter how fast you can go or how slow you go if you can't stop the bike. Henceforth, incredibly important. We basically have two types of brakes when it comes to bikes. We have mechanical brakes which is a system that uses cables and levers and the cable pulls the brakes closed onto the bike or we have hydraulic brakes. Hydraulic brakes use fluid and pressure to open and close the brakes. The brake system on our Super Monarch lines are all hydraulic brakes. Some brakes may vary due to make and models but just like the derailers and everything else the concepts the same if you know how to do these it's just a matter of seeing what's different on your particular model so that you can make the proper adjustments front brake rear brake the adjustments are all the same so we're going to show you with the front brake today how to change the brake pads align your brake pads bleed your brake system and most importantly after all that's done you want to properly seat or bed your brakes, which is a small adjustment wear period that makes your brakes work the most efficiently so that when you need them, they're there. If you notice, this may be one of the rare videos, I'm wearing gloves. Reason being, oil from your fingers is enough to damage and make a set of brake pads not work properly. Being clean and meticulous is very important. As we've said over and over and over again, one of the most, if not the most important safety system of your bike, the ability to stop. To start this procedure, we're gonna go ahead and remove the front brake and for this particular model, it's a number five Allen to remove. We'll remove the brake to start. And now with the brake pad removed, or the brake caliper removed from the rotor and the mount, we can start our adjustments. These brake pads are fairly worn down, so we're going to replace them. And to replace them, we have to start with removing the retaining bolt that is holding the caliper in place. Here's a little trick for you. These brake pads are worn, so the pistons have pushed out. And if we put new brake pads in right now, it's not going to want to fit on because the new pads are going to be thicker. And this is set for these worn pads. We're going to use a brake pad spreader to open that caliper up all the way and what that's going to do is save us a little bit of headache when we go to put the new brake pads in. It is a specially designed tool that is flat on one side and beveled on one side only. If you tried to do this adjustment with a screwdriver, a screwdriver is beveled on both sides and it will damage your brakes. If you do not have a brake spreader tool, it's okay. Unfortunately, your wife's not going to love you. But a butter knife works very well because it's flat on both sides. So when you stick it in and apply pressure, it does not mar either side of the brake pad. We're now going to remove this retaining clip. And once this pin is removed, then we can pull the old brake pads out and insert our new ones. There's our old brake pads. Our pistons are in the full open position so when the new pads go in that should leave us plenty of room to be able to go on and not create any damage. Here are our new brake pads. Now we just insert the pads in and retaining pin goes back in and we tighten that up. We 
What I am going to do is make sure with the new pads in, use the spreader to make sure that we are fully open in an open position. And see how easy that brake goes on? If you don't open it up, you're going to fight with it the entire time and you're always going to have brake rub. You need to fully open them when you put them on. Now we're going to put our brake caliper bolts, mount bolts, back on. And if you note, I'm not cranking this down tight yet. Because we've just changed the brake pads and we've removed the caliper from the mount and replaced it, it's not going to be centered right. So now, what we're going to want to do is adjust these pads so that we're not getting any rub and set the brake caliper. The easiest way to adjust and align your brakes is bolts are still loose so that the caliper can move back and forth. I have the bike in front motor only. Lift the bike up a little bit. Apply power and hit the brake. Now with the brake still applied, we can tighten those two bolts and our caliper is affixed and aligned with the rotor. Now those are tightened down. No rub, nice and clean. Okay, we've put in new brake pads. We've aligned the brake pads, but we still have some excess play in our front brake lever. The reason that we still have the extra play here, even though we've changed the brake pads, and as the brake pads are new, they spread open and it takes less fluid to create pressure to close them, this brake lever's telling us we don't have enough fluid in here. That's why it wants to squeeze so far before it starts grabbing. So we're going to put some fluid in here and we're going to make sure that there's no air in the line because air compresses differently than liquid. So an air bubble in the line will create this spongy feeling. This is a basic Tektro brake bleeding kit. We have a hydraulic syringe with an end on that will hook into the brake caliper. There's a Zert and we'll show you that momentarily. And we have a reservoir recapture bottle. And we're going to hook this up to the actual brake lever and reservoir so that as we force the hydraulic fluid out of the syringe into the system, all the air bubbles will go through the line and up into the recapture bottle. But first, we have to prime this syringe. Our brake systems use mineral oil. And now my syringe is full of mineral oil and ready to go. On this particular model, this is our Zert right at the top. I'm dry fitting to make sure that this is the right bit to get this Zert off. This Zert holds the brake fluid in you do not want to damage it or cause any problems. This is what's going to keep your system running. Make sure you take that brief moment to use the right bit. Your life will depend on your brakes working properly one day. Knowing it's the right bit and we're not going to cause any damage, I'm going to remove this bottom zerk. Now with the Zert removed, we can make our connection with our hydraulic syringe and tighten that down. Our syringe is connected and we're ready to inject fluid except we need to put the recapture bottle on and remove the dessert from the top reservoir 
Otherwise, there's no place for the fresh fluid to go. On our brake handle and reservoir, here's the Zert right here. But before I undo this, if we see the way the brakes are sitting, as soon as I open this up, stuff's gonna wanna leak out because it's not sitting level. So what I'm gonna do is just crack loose the two bolts holding the brake caliper. Now I can manipulate the caliper so that this brake reservoir is sitting more level so that when I crack that, this top zert open, stuff doesn't leak out. I do want to take note and mention the reason I hooked the bottom up first before I even undid this bolt was this was still a sealed unit so since there wasn't the ability for air to come in here not as much fluid wanted to leak out. It's actually a good thing that this happened while it's on camera. I don't know if the camera can pick this up, but the gasket for that Zert stayed inside. If I try and screw this on and force it now, I'm going to damage this gasket when you hit your brakes because the gasket's get, been damaged. Fluid will leak out. Once you start losing fluid, you start losing brakes. Like I said, these are very important pieces that you want to take that extra moment to make sure it's right. Gasket removed. Now the reservoir recapture bottle goes on very easily. Now what we have is a completely hooked up system so that when we pull this or push on the plunger down below, it's going to force fluid from the brake caliper down below all the way through the line all the way up to this reservoir any air bubbles or any of that will be pushed out now we just push the plunger right here the camera's picking it up here's an air bubble that's causing some of this sponginess in the brake lever and as i'm pushing on the plunger we're watching that air bubble go out and we're getting the air out of the brake lines. We've injected almost the whole syringe and as you see, there's no more air bubbles coming out of the line. So we know we've got the air bubbles out. We're gonna start with undoing the top first. I have a rag here. And this rag is just coated with 91 rubbing alcohol. That way anything that drips out, we can immediately clean it up and gets all that oily residue off. The reservoir bottle has been removed. We made sure to put the gasket back on the Zert before reinstallation. Make sure it's tight, make sure it's snug, but don't go over crazy on it because like we've mentioned so many times already, very important piece and you do not wanna damage it over tightening it. We're gonna reset our brake lever to the position you had it before you loosened it. That way it's comfortable for riding and to be able to use it. Now it's time to disconnect the hydraulic syringe from the caliper, close that part up, and we have just finished bleeding a set of brakes. Even though that is sealed at the top, a little bit of fluid's still gonna leak out. So what I'm gonna do is, I've already got the Zert prepped and ready to go, so that when I remove this, I can immediately get that Zert in and as little leakage as possible. The reason this is important, you got new brake pads in there. Who wants to wreck your new brake pads?
There we go, we have our Zert reinstalled. We have no excess mineral oil anywhere, everything's cleaned up. Okay, we've got good lever action now. Stopping where it needs to, grabbing. The only thing we have left to do, since these are brand new brakes, we're gonna wanna bed them, seat them, referred to many different ways, but bedding the brakes is basically taking brand new brake pads and gently wearing them in so that they marry to the rotor properly and will give you the stopping power and grip that you need. To properly bed a set of brakes, you would take the bike out on the road, go for a slight ride, make sure there's not a lot of traffic, and get the bike up to about 20 miles an hour and apply pressure to the brake. You don't have to come to a dead stop, down to about five miles an hour and then back on it. Slow the brakes back down. Do this several times, anywhere from 10 to 20 and that'll make sure that your brake pads marry to the rotor properly. Helps prevent all that squeakiness. What happens a lot of times with squeaky brakes is you haven't taken the time to bed the brakes and the rotors in and you apply a hard stop. The brakes work, but because they haven't been worn in, all that brand new everything on them builds up and that's going to create that squeaking and those nasty sounds that just sound terrible. And all it takes is just a slight three to four mile ride, bringing the bike up to speed, slowing it down. Well, we have successfully changed the set of brakes. We've aligned the brakes, we've bled the brakes, and we've bedded the brakes. There's not much left that you can do to a brake system we just didn't do. Does not matter how fast you can go. If you can't stop, it don't count. Thank you, I hope this was helpful and informative to you. And as you see, keep the questions coming. We'll keep bringing you the answers. We had just finished shooting a video and in the video I was wearing gloves. A lot of times we wear gloves to protect our hands or protect products, but it never fails. You're wearing a set of gloves, somebody calls, you gotta take them off, now you gotta put new gloves on to start your project back up. No you don't. Wear two sets. Thank you, have a great day.